in my last video, I talked about the first land battle of the Puerto Rican campaign at Yauco. Today, I will talk about the surrender of Ponce and the disastrous retreat to Arecibo by Puig's men. On July 25th, as the American fleet headed towards Yauco, the fleet was spotted off the coast of Ponce and the city prepared for an attack, but it was not to be, and Puig's men had left for Yauco later that morning. On the 27th, as Spanish forces at Yauco prepared to retreat, the American fleet moves east to Ponce once again, this time to take the city. They arrive at 3 p.m. and immediately pointed their guns at the port. The American forces at Ponce were the 3rd Wisconsin Volunteer Regiment under General Wilson, the 2nd Volunteer Regiment under General Ernst, and the 16th Pennsylvania Volunteer Regiment along with 200 wagons, 700 mules, 100 horses, and enough rations for 30 days. The total was 3,571 soldiers and officers. The Spanish defense of Ponce consisted of three companies of the 25th Light Infantry Regiment with 583 men, the 9th Volunteer Battalion with 330 men, 60 public order officers, and a company of firemen with 130 members whose job was to help make entrenchments. A total of 1,103 men under the command of Colonel Leopoldo San Martin defended Ponce. Lieutenant Marion and Ensign Lodge of the American forces landed Ponce with a flag of truce and demand the city surrender. The Spanish port captain, Ubaldo Perez, has no authority over the surrender and refers them to Fernando Toro, the British vice consul in Ponce, who had permission from San Martin to negotiate. Lieutenant Merriam demands once again the surrender or the port shall be destroyed. Angered by this attitude, Toro returns to the city center, which is three miles away, and explains the situation. Toro once again returns to the port and boards the USS Dixie. He was told there by Commander Davis that the Spanish have until midnight to surrender or face combat. San Martin had previously sent a telegram to Macias explaining the situation. Toro returns and sends another telegram to Macias. Macias sends two separate messages. The first indicates to San Martin to defend the city at all costs. The second says to Toro that he has no authority to negotiate with the Americans and that Ponce will be defended. The second message is made public and panic ensues in the streets. Macias sends a third telegram telling San Martin that if he thinks that the city cannot be defended by conventional manner, then he must retreat to Coamo. Toro talks with the Americans and indicates the following terms. The Spanish garrison is to leave unharmed. The municipal government is to take charge until American forces officially land and that Ubaldo Perez is to be released for he was imprisoned by the Americans earlier that day. At midnight on the 28th, Toro and the Major of Ponce, Ulpiano Colón, along with other consuls in Ponce, find out that Macias had sent a fourth telegram revoking the order to retreat after San Martin had already prepared to do so. San Martin was relieved of command and had to move to San Juan, where he later was arrested and imprisoned in San Cristobal for the remainder of the war. The new commander, Julian Alonso, was commanded to resist the invasion. Toro sent a telegram to Macias furious of these events and blamed him for not respecting the honor of a Spanish colonel and took it in his own hands to surrender the city as previously agreed upon with the Americans. Toro told the Americans that the Spanish forces would leave that morning and Spanish forces left the city by 4 a.m. American forces begin landing at 5.30 a.m. and take possession of all governmental and military buildings. General Miles, commanding general of all American forces in Puerto Rico, releases at 5 p.m. a proclamation reading the following. 
to the inhabitants of Puerto Rico as a result of the war waged against Spain by the people of the United States for the cause of freedom, justice, and humanity, its military forces have come to occupy the island of Puerto Rico. They come bearing the banner of liberty, inspired by the noble purpose of seeking out the enemies of our country and yours, and of destroying or capturing all who resist in arms. They bring you the armed support of a nation of free people whose great power rests on their justice and humanity for all those who live under their protection and shelter. For this reason, the first effect of this occupation will be the immediate change of your old political forms, expecting, therefore, that you will gladly accept the government of the United States. The main purpose of the American military forces will be to abolish the armed authority of Spain and to give the people of this beautiful island the greatest sum of liberties compatible with this military occupation. We have not come to wage war against the people of a country which has been oppressed for some centuries, but on the contrary, to bring you protection not only to you, but also to your property, promoting your prosperity, and pouring out upon you the guarantees and blessings of the institutions of our government. We have no purpose of intervening in existing laws and customs which are sound and beneficial to your people, provided they conform to the principles of military administration, order, and justice. This is not a war of devastation, but a war that will provide everyone with their naval and military forces with the advantages and prosperity of the splendid nation. You may be wondering what happened to the Spanish troops that retreated from Yauco. On July 27th, after retreating from the town, Puig was originally going to return to Ponce but Governor Macias ordered him to instead move to Arecibo due to fears that the Americans attacked the coastal train to Ponce and that the Guanica invasion was just a distraction for a second attack on San Juan. His forces, numbering just around 400 men, moved to the town of Peñuelas on the 28th. On the morning of the 29th, they moved north to Adjuntas, where they encountered torrential rain and steep hills and are forced to abandon any equipment of non-military value, and Puig's telegraphed orders were lost in the rain. They arrived in Utuado on the 30th, and on the 31st, they arrived, finally, in Arecibo. Once there, Puig received news that he was to turn in his command to Colonel Rodrigo in Arecibo, a personal enemy of his, and to report to San Juan for military trial due to the manner of his retreat and the abandonment of supplies to the enemy. Since he had lost his papers in Adjuntas, he had no proof that he was just following orders from the governor. Due to the possibility of losing the trial and wanting to conserve his military honor, Puig went to the beach of Arecibo on August 2nd and committed suicide, leaving his wife widowed and his 11 children without a father. On the next episode, I will talk about the American landings in Arroyo and the Battle of Guayama.